Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to be learning how to crochet this mini Christmas stocking ornament, which you can see here in front of you. I've worked it up in uh, a couple of different color options. Uh, these are very quick, very easy to make. They measure approximately six inches by two and a half inches across the widest point and then six inches from top to bottom. They're worked uh, again using simple stitches, just single crochet stitches. Uh, so again, it's very easy to work. You're going to need a little bit of worsted weight cotton, about uh, 30 yards of each color or give or take. Uh, I'm using a Dishy Cotton by We Crochet and Knit Picks and it's a 100% worsted weight. You're going to need two different colors. I'll be using Douglas Fir and this color Swan. You're also going to need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook and a copy of the free written pattern, which is on my website at ridgetexturescrochet.com. I'll provide the direct link for you down in the description of this video. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, don't forget to subscribe, take a look around. There are many other free crochet patterns and stitch tutorials here for you to browse. Now I neglected to mention at the beginning of this pattern, you're also going to need one stitch marker as we'll be working in continuous rounds for this design. So you're going to start by taking your color A. With your color A, you're either going to make a magic ring or you can chain two and work into the second chain from your hook. So for my magic ring, I make it very simply, taking my yarn, kind of fold it over, cross it over, and then I pull up my working yarn through the center and chain one. That's all I do for my magic ring. I'm now going to work into this ring here through the center. For round one, you've chained one, or if you've chained two, you're just working into the second chain from your hook. You're going to work six single crochet into the center of your ring. You can then pull your magic ring closed. You're not going to join, but we're going to continue working in rounds and marking the first stitch. So now into your next stitch and each stitch all the way around, you're going to work into the back loop only and work two single crochet. So when you look at the stitch, you have a loop that's closest to you, that's your front loop, this is your back loop, that loop that is farthest away. So you're going to work two single crochet stitches into each stitch all the way around. You're going to mark that first stitch just so you don't lose your place. At the end of this round, you're going to have a total of 12 stitches. For round three, continue working in the back loop only. You're going to single crochet into the first stitch. Remember to place your stitch marker back. And then work two single crochet into the next stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. One single crochet in the back loop only of the next stitch and two single crochets in the back loop only of the next all the way around at the end of this round you're going to have a total of 18 stitches
for round four, continue working in the back loop only, single crochet in each of the next two stitches, in the back loop only, and then work two single crochet into your next stitch. You're going to repeat that one single crochet in the back loop only of each of the next two stitches, followed by two single crochet into the back loop only of the next stitch, all the way around. At the end of round four, you're going to have a total of 24 stitches. Now for the next two rounds, rounds five and six, you're simply going to work one single crochet into the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. So at the end of each of these rounds, you'll continue to have 24 stitches. You're just working one single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. At the end of round six, you can join with a slip stitch in the first stitch and fasten off. I'll show you that when I come around. So work rounds five and six and meet me back here. At the end of round six, this is what your work should look like. You want to make sure that you push your stocking toe so that the textured side is on the outside. You may find it flipping like that, but we want to work it this way. Once you've come around to the end of round six, you're going to simply join under both loops with a slip stitch into that first stitch and you're going to fasten off. If you wish, you can go ahead and weave in any ends. You're then going to join, and I'm going to join in the back loop only. Of the same stitch as joining, you're going to join your color B. And chain one. You're then going to, for seven rounds, so this is round seven through to 13, you're going to single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. So using that color B in the back loop only, single crochet, uh, you're going to want to mark that first stitch. Again, we're working in continuous rounds, so at the end of each round, you're not going to join. You're just going to continue working in the next stitch. When you come to the first stitch, especially in this first round of color B, you may want to pull it just a little bit tighter uh, to make sure that there is no gaps. So go ahead, this is for the foot of our stocking, you're going to just simply work seven rounds of single crochet stitches in the back loop only. At the end of round 13, this is what your work should look like from the beginning. You're then going to remove your stitch marker again and join with a slip stitch uh, under both loops. You can then fasten off your color B. We're now going to work the heel of our sock. And you're going to do that by taking your color A and joining your yarn, and you can join under both loops. For the heel, we're going to work under both loops. You're going to join in the stitch that's to the right of the stitch where your color B was joined. So here is our join in this next stitch just to the right. Join your color A. You can then chain one. 
for our heel is worked in rows and we're going to be working back and forth what you're going to do for row one is working under both loops single crochet in the same stitch as joining and then in each of the next two stitches so I'm working over top of where I joined my color B earlier and then into the next stitch leaving the remaining stitches unworked you can chain one and turn for row two you're going to single crochet into each of the next three stitches one two and three next single crochet into the next stitch or into the same stitch as join uh, down below of uh, where you have worked your uh, color a so it's in this stitch that's on your round 13 but in the same stitch where you've worked your color a for the heel you're just going to insert your hook and work a single crochet then slip stitch into the next stitch chain one and turn skip the slip stitch and for row three you're going to single crochet into each of the next four single crochet stitches so there's one two three and four now once again on row 13 down below into the next stitch which is the same stitch where you worked your single crochet of the first row of your heel you're going to insert your hook work a single crochet and slip stitch into the next stitch on row 13 chain one and turn for row four you're going to skip the slip stitch single crochet into each of the next five stitches next single crochet down into the same stitch as your slip stitch down below in that round 13 and then slip stitch into the next stitch chain one and turn for row five skip the first slip stitch single crochet into each of the next six stitches single crochet into the next stitch down on round 13 which is the same stitch as your previous slip stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch chain one and turn for your row six and this is the final row in your heel you're going to skip the slip stitch single crochet into each of the next seven stitches single crochet into the next stitch on round 13 which is where you worked your previous slip stitch and slip stitch into the next stitch at this time you can fasten off that color a go ahead and weave in any ends once you have woven in your ends it just makes it a little bit easy before easier before you work the rest of the stocking to finish it off later on this is what your work looks like once you have finished your heel you're then going to join your yarn in the back loop only of uh, really any stitch all the way around I like to join it 
just in the back of this heel here. Um, but it's really, it really doesn't make too much of a difference where you join it because we're working in the continuous rounds. So you're just going to join your yarn with a slip stitch in the back loop only. You want your right side facing. You're going to chain one. You're now going to work in the back loop only and single crochet into each stitch all the way around. As you're working, and I'll show you as I come here, I'm just working over top of my tail, but you want to work in every single crochet stitch and you're going to skip the slip stitches of your heel. So I've just worked. This next stitch is my slip stitch. I'm going to skip it and jump down into my round 13, pull it a little bit tighter so that there's no gap and work a single crochet stitch. You're then going to continue working in the back loop only, working your single crochet stitches in each stitch all the way around. I'll work around to the other heel and just show you the little jump once again. At the end of this first round of your stocking cup, a cuff, you should have a total of 24 stitches once again. So I'm just going to continue working around. Once again, I've come to my slip stitch. I'm going to skip it and immediately work into the first single crochet on the, heel, uh, on the heel of my stocking and then work in the final stitches. Do not join at the end of this round. Instead, you're going to continue working and for rounds two through to 12, so for 11 more rounds, you're simply going to continue working single crochets in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. Mark your first stitch and then continue to move your stitch marker as your work progresses. But go ahead and work 11 more rounds of single crochet stitches worked in the back loop only and then meet me back here. At the end of your round 12 for your stocking cuff, this is what your work will look like. You can then join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. And then fasten off and go ahead and weave in any ends. You're then going to turn your work, okay? So we want to have uh, the inside of our sock facing us. I guess you don't really need to turn it, but you just need to make sure that you're working uh, in the direction so that the inside is facing you. You're then going to join your yarn with a slip stitch once again in the back loop only, and you're going to join your color A. and chain one. You're then going to continue working in rounds, working into the back loop only, single crochet into each stitch all the way around. Once again, when you come to your first stitch, do not join. You can just mark your first stitch and uh, continue working in the back loop only. This time you want your textured stitches um, to be on the inside of your sock, which is why I had you turn it there or to make sure that you're working in a direction so that the inside of your sock is facing you. So it, for this color A, have the texture on the inside, single crochet in the back loop only of each stitch all the way around. You're going to work 
through to round 18. So this is rounds 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, six rounds, working single crochet in the back loop only with your color A. I'm almost all the way around here to my first stitch. You should have 24 stitches, continue to have 24 stitches in these rounds as you work. So when you come back to your first stitch, once again, work the little jump, pull it fairly tight, and then mark that first stitch and work your five more rounds. At the end of round 18, you've worked six rounds. In your color A, you can remove your stitch marker, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch, working under both loops, and fasten off. At this time, you can go ahead and tuck in any ends that you might have remaining. Then you can turn your cuff down so that it's now right side out. Attach a hanger if you desire at the back of your sock up at the top. And that's all there is to working your little mini Christmas stocking. So enjoy, thank you so much for joining me. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.